Now, today is World Heart Day. Have you got a heart, Gillian? I do, contrary to what you might yeah, think. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see it very often. Uh, a new study has revealed Britons know very little, actually, about heart disease. A quarter survey said they couldn't identify a symptom. The North East, the lowest awareness rate and fewest people taking measures to keep a healthy heart. Let's talk to Hammersmith Hospital cardiologist, Dr Iqbal Malik, who no doubt has got a very healthy heart, Dr I would imagine. I hope so, I haven't checked. <laughs> oh, you, should, you should check. Uh, the, what are the symptoms that we should be aware of? So thanks for the opportunity to talk. The, the most important symptom, the commonest one, is a discomfort or a tightness or a heaviness in the centre of the chest. But the problem is it can be quite variable. And so that same symptom, especially in the left arm or your neck or sometimes even in your teeth, could indicate heart disease. And, and the other big problem is sometimes what you think is indigestion turns out to be a heart attack. So the rule probably is anything from the jaw down to the belly button, if it's coming on, you don't know why it's happened, it's lasting more than half an hour, you might want to be careful about that symptom. That, that's a broad spectrum though, isn't it? And um, people by their very nature think, oh, I don't want to, to, to bother any medics. It probably is indigestion. I mean, is there a way of telling the, the difference between the types of, of pains and discomfort? I, I think it is, especially with the sort of epigastric, the upper tummy symptoms, it's very difficult. So we see a lot of people that come in because they think they're having a heart attack and we assess them and it turns out to be indigestion. I must say I'd rather see those than mm. un the unfortunate ones that think it's indigestion have a heart attack and then unfortunately don't make it because they're staying at home. Yes. So the, the, the big news about the heart is that if you get to the the hospital and you're assessed properly then actually your chance of survival is extremely high these days whereas if you stay at home you underplay the symptoms then you could be in big trouble uh, what about keeping our hearts healthy we heard there that the you know the northeast is <clears throat> is you know the the least good region in terms of of keeping our hearts healthy i thought we were all pretty clear we might not all behave ourselves all the time but weren't we all pretty clear on on what we need to do. So I think is, uh, there's a big divide about how the messages get through and who's actually listening. So people who are very attuned to their health listen to a lot of health messages, so they take it all on board. People who are perhaps less attuned to their health, are busy working hard, may not be getting the message. So here on, you know, there's an opportunity here to say, look, of course we know that smoking is very bad for you and you should stop. And there's been a big campaign about obesity and trying to reduce your weight, which lowers cancer rates, lowers your blood pressure and therefore lowers your heart attack rates as well. So those two are big, but our diet, we've known for ages that a diet that's high in fruit, fibre, vegetables is very good for you, five a day, and that saturated fats perhaps aren't as good. So those messages really have to be keep on being pushed out there. Yeah, but as you say, we, we kind of all know the messages, but are you surprised that so many of us can't identify the, the, the symptoms of, of heart disease. So I think the, the messages about the diet and exercise have been there for a long mm. time. With those symptoms, I think it's quite surprising how many people wouldn't even recognise central chest tightness. About a third of people wouldn't even recognise that as a symptom of the heart. And I think most people would have accepted that that feeling, not mm. pain perhaps, because people describe pain in different ways, but this feeling in the centre of your chest, if, if we get nothing out of the study except for that, Central chest tightness, anything in that middle of your chest that you're not expecting, coming on at rest, worry about it. Is there anything we can do to check ourselves at home? Because I mean, the other technology is improving so much. I'm, I'm type 1, so I'm check, checking my blood glucose mm. all the time. Um, you know, you can buy blood pressure monitors for the home, but you're know, very cheaply mm. these days. I mean, is there anything we can do where if we had concerns, we can check the health of our heart? So I think in that moment where you've got a symptom that you're worried about, then actually what you need is a specialist ECG, not the sort of Apple Watch ECG or a monitor, but a, a proper 12-lead ECG in the hospital to right. see whether that's actually causing a problem. And in hospital, we have some very, very fancy blood tests. There is no spot check at home that will do it for you like your BM would. Yeah, mm. right. Okay. So, on World Heart Day, are you going to get your heart checked out? <laughs> As you I'm, I'm over so 50 far. now, and I'm thinking about it, certainly. But hope, uh, I'm healthy at the moment. <laughs> so I think, you know, for people who are around about 50, who've got no cardiac symptoms mm. at all, then actually focusing on not smoking, exercising regularly, and diet is probably more important than going to get some fancy test yeah. that 
when there's a very low chance of finding something, anything they find is usually spurious. So yeah. I'm not recommending everyone right. get 50, go out and get something done. No, no. Look, good, sensible yes. advice. Really good to see this one. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Still to come, all the sport, including the latest...